boy, I don't even know how do you explain a place like this. It's a workshop. It's a pedestal to, to uh, from which you can display technology, and it's a bunch of great people trying to do something great for aviation. So if we put it all in there, thanks for letting us be here. But more important, tell us what the mission is behind everything you're doing right now. Well, it's great to have you here. In fact, that is our mission. Our mission is to give people the experience that the Wright brothers felt in 1910 when they were flying their airplanes at Huffman Prairie. And we do that here three days a week. We open the organization, people come in and fly with us. And I have never seen somebody walk out of our airplane after a flight without a smile on their face. Because this is an experience that's been lost, that you can't get anywhere else, and uh, really brings you back to the original days when the Wright brothers, who were really pioneering the industry at the time, lived through. How did this all come about? What are the beginnings of the Wright B. Flyer organization? The Wright B. Flyer started in the late 70s. There were a group of volunteers out at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base that decided it would be helpful to the community if there were a way to show people what the Wright brothers experienced. So out at Wright-Patterson, they got a bunch of volunteers together, and they built the airplane that we lovingly call our Brownbird. It started in about 1976, first flew in 1982. After the airplane was flown in 1982 at Wright-Patterson, they came here to KMGY, Dayton Wright Brothers Airport, and we started this nonprofit that is Wright B. Flyer Incorporated. So we came here, built this hangar with the help of funds from some excellent volunteers and supporters, and since 1982, we have been doing this mission. And since 1982, we've flown over 4,600 people in our existing airplane, the Wright B. Flyer, including, we like to say, Neil Armstrong, who was a friend of ours and would come up occasionally. A funny story, when we flew Neil Armstrong, he came up here in December. And as you might imagine, flying this airplane in December is a very cold experience, but he enjoyed it a lot. You're in the process now of building another ship. You've got plans for the future. The obvious question is, where do you go from here? One thing that we are not really able to do is service many of the people outside of the Dayton area. The current airplane we have is very difficult to transport, and it only flies at 50 miles an hour. So a few years ago, my board of trustees and I decided that we needed to refresh our airplane, but do an airplane that would be more supportable, look a little more authentic, but more important, be transportable. So we set out to build an airplane that looks like the 1911 Wright Brothers airplane, but will fit into a Connex shipping container so that we can ship the airplane worldwide to other audiences outside the United States of America. We're lucky we're standing on the Wright's shoulders. They were true pioneers. We take what they have done and have put it into this airplane back here. We retain most of the design elements that they had in their airplane. We have a single engine, we have chain drive to two propellers, and then we have had to enhance the airplane because one thing that we have that the Wright brothers didn't have was a modern air traffic control structure. <laughs> so the airplane, when we go to air shows and we take it across the country, needs to be able to fly within the FAA airspace. So this airplane will actually have ADSB in and out, basically a digital electronic system on it that I'm, I'm sure the Wright brothers would be amazed if they saw. Talk about what's taken to build the organization, to keep the organization funded, to make sure that this airplane is still out front uh, a couple of days a week for people to see and go ooh and ah. It is truly a labor of love. The gentlemen and ladies that you see in the organization here, they're all volunteers. They build the designs that we have right here. Also in our volunteer force are a tremendous resource, the Experimental Aircraft Association chapters nearby. They're great folks because they've got the skills, they've got the understanding, and they like to work on an airplane, and that's what we do out here. Here's your chance. Tell them out there what they can do to support extraordinary projects like this and help you build a future worthy of the history it represents. Well, the first thing I'd like to say is it's a great fun ride, and the way you could support me is coming out with a smile. I would love to fly anybody that wants to come out. Our flying season usually goes from April to September. So come on out. Join my organization. If you join the organization, you'll get a ride. We're open Tuesdays 
Thursdays and Saturdays, and we can put you in our book, and we'll reserve a flight for you. And on the website, you'll see when our hours are. You'll also see a page there that talks about the progress on the new airplane, as well as access to that GoFundMe site if you want to give something to us to help us out. Sir, we thank you for your time. Thanks for joining us on Aero TV, and call me when you're ready to fly the new bird. we got to be here for that. We will definitely do that. Thanks a lot for coming down. Thank you, sir. Aero TV is brought to you by... Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B-Models. The B-Models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft.